So thank you so much, everyone, for joining here. And again, this is my first time speaking here, so please be kind to me. OK? Yeah. So I'm uh, Megha Shah. Uh, I am the principal solution architect at Compliance Cow. Uh, I have been an engineer throughout my life. And for the past three years, I've been working closely with the GRC teams and helping them enhance these processes. So today, we'll be uh, dig into this topic, enhancing security GRC, how you can leverage AI and LLM for continuous control monitoring. So how many of you are from GRC? OK, interesting. How many of you closely worked with GRC teams? OK, and how many of you have never heard the term GRC? OK, interesting. OK, so yeah, those who are from GRC, I feel your pain. Uh, so let's start with the agenda. The, we'll first dig into the problems faced by the GRC teams. OK, what are the day-to-day -day challenges they face? Uh, versus like engineering teams, right? What leads to inefficiencies? What leads to miscommunication leading to compliance issues, right? And then we'll deep dive into solutions. How you can leverage AI, LLM, along with graph model for continuous control monitoring and enhance the GRC process. Finally, we'll conclude. Okay, so what, let's acknowledge what are the challenges faced by the GRC team? Uh, and by the way, GRC means governance, risk, and compliance for those who are hearing this term for the first time. So there are too many static files, right? What do we mean by static files? We have PCI DSS, we have NIST CSF, we have ISO, SOC 2, and to add to the complexity, there are, again, organizations, they have their own custom policies, right? To complicate it further, there are too many systems in scope. We have multiple clouds, AWS, Azure, GCP. We have SaaS applications, Intune, Okta, CrowdStrike, ServiceNow, Jira, and Kubernetes as well. There are too many people, right, which are meant to help in expediting the decision-making process, but it leads to a lot of chaos, a lot of friction, which in turn delays the decision-making process. Now, what is this gap? The gap is between the engineering team and the GRC team. Now, the engineering, this gap is because engineering team operates at a very, very high speed versus what the GRC team does. So there are hundreds of releases delivered by the engineering team versus few releases or audits that are uh, dealt by the GRC team. The data volume handled by the engineering team is also very high compared to few evidences that are handled by GRC team. So what can we do to bridge this gap? Continuous control monitoring can help bridge this gap. It can ensure that audit is not a once in a year check in the box process and we get the posture of your security posture of your systems in real time. So continuous control monitoring is the way. Now, so far we have, we all know, okay, we, we haven't talked about anything new. Now let's dig into further and uh, into today's topic of discussion, which is how you can leverage LLM and GraphDB to improve the process of continuous control monitoring. Now, as you can see here, the problem of too many files can be solved using LLM. You can parse the policy documents, PDF, using LLM. You can give uh, proper prompts, and you can convert this into machine-readable format. Like here, uh, what I've done is I have parsed the NSA hardening for Kubernetes, and I've converted into a YAML file. Now, we can define the hierarchy of controls in in this YAML file. Next, what we can do is we can attach the automation to gather the evidences to these controls. And to extend the solution further, what we can do is we can define GRC schema. So this is our point of view of how we have defined the GRC schema. 
Now, as you can see here, we have NSA hardening, we have MITRE, and these are the control nodes. So my compliance uh, standard contains these control nodes. We can also define evidence nodes and the policy nodes. The policy in here is nothing but the rules or the automations that you attach to the controls. So we have defined a GRC schema. Next is how you can define the system schema. Now, when I say system schema, you can, uh, you, here we have used Neo4j, you can bring in any uh, graph model and uh, you can define the system schema. So this is the sample schema of a Kubernetes cluster, wherein we have the namespace, we have the deployment, we have the pods, all the way to the images, right? Now, we have the GRC schema and we have the system schema. We need to bridge the gap between these two by establishing a relationship between these two schemas, okay? So here, as you can see, I have this pod, okay? It has an image and this image has uh, vulnerabilities. Now, these vulnerabilities are coming in from Trivi or Sneak or any vulnerability scanner of your choice. So we are correlating two different data points. And additionally, you can see here, this pod is evaluated as non-compliant for this control. Now this control says that this pod has a forbidden Linux capability, okay? So which means we have a vulnerable image in the pod and the pod is also non-compliant for a given control, okay? Now you can, uh, these two different data points are correlated. Again, you can double click further. You can check if the Kubernetes cluster is running on a VM which is directly or indirectly publicly exposed. So the three different data points from three different sources, but you are correlating these data points, right? What, how, how does this help? This process helps us eliminate noise. It gives you a focus area and it helps you in making better decisions. So that is the advantage of graph model. Now you can make it more interesting by layering LLM on top of it. Using LLM, you can ask questions, intriguing questions to the graph model in plain language. LLM can convert these questions to GraphQL queries. It can fetch the answers and provide it you in uh, plain language. The advantage of this is for analysts or those who are non-developers who have no knowledge of uh, GraphDB or GraphQL queries, they can get the insights uh, right uh, uh, in plain language itself. They need not know the technology, okay? So, here are the list of open source projects that can be used. We have used Neo4j, but we also have looked cartography. It also gives a very good perspective into AWS and Kubernetes resources. You can use any graph model of your choice. You can use OPA, Kiverno. We have written our own custom policies in Go and Python. And uh, you can bring in your LLM, own LLM models to build this solution. Finally, let's conclude. To summarize, what we saw today is how, what are the challenges that are faced by the GRC team, how you can help them by leveraging LLM, how you can convert the PDF documents to YAML structure using LLM, how you can define graph schemas and uh, define the hierarchical uh, relationship between these schemas, uh, and then how you can integrate LLM with this. The benefits of this is you can avoid, like I said, you can avoid noise. It gives you an area of focus. It improves the efficiency of uh, GRC team. It helps you automate the process. It saves you a lot of time and resources. It, the graph model ensures there is a standardization of all the systems. So it could be your AWS system, Azure system, but the policy uh, node should look same. The st structure of the evidence should look same. Right? So we are adding some standardization to it. Now, again, LLM helps you simplify the complex data. 
Now, if you want to do some interesting stuff, the next step you can do is you can add scoring logic on top of it. You can use CL expression and you can uh, you can know like, okay, my, my Kubernetes cluster is 50% compliant to NSA hardening. It is 60% compliant to MITRE attack. So you can add CL scoring. You can again integrate all this with chat ops. So the GRC person can directly ask these questions from Slack or Teams without even knowing that there is a graph uh, model uh, behind, right? And finally, you can have your reporting custom report dashboard, which will give you the entire uh, posture of all your systems. So yeah, that's about it. Um, yeah, uh, thank you so much. And here's the LinkedIn. If you have any feedback, any questions, if you would like to discuss any interesting use cases, I would love to keep in touch with you. We are here for two more days. Any questions? Thank you. I have a quick question myself. Sure. Um, I've been using language models that are integrated with my SIM as a security example of something similar to what you're talking about. And what I find is there's a constant problem with hallucinations on the field. So I'll say, show me all of the Falco events with this tag. And instead of the events that are of a type Falco, it says, here are all of the events with that tag from things that have Falco in the host name, and maybe there are none. Do you have any concerns or suggestions for how to resolve the issue of it hallucinating what your intent was when you ask it a question specifically about compliance saying, saying no, all of your nodes are compliant when really it, it just misunderstood or hallucinated something else that would lead to the wrong answer? Yeah, so we basically, we deal with compliance questions, but again, uh, it all, again depends on the schema. The way you define the schema matters a lot. Uh, and the relationship between the nodes that you establish that matters a lot while getting all these uh, to deal with the uh, hallucination problem. So, yeah. Thanks. Any other questions? Okay. Keep in touch. Thank you.